In Venice, players take the role of wealthy, influential merchants as they ride their gondolas up and down the city's canals, train their assistants, complete contracts, and leverage their influence to gain political power. But business is anything but usual. As they broker contracts and flirt with crime, merchants must avoid arousing the suspicion of the Venetian Inquisition, lest they find themselves arrested and their businesses shut down. Give each player a board, the components of their color, and six coins. Shuffle the building tiles and place one face up on each of the empty dock spaces. Place the end game piece on the player council track next to the corresponding number determined by player count. Create a random face down mission deck determined by player count and deal out three missions to each player. Selecting two, the remaining cards will be returned to the bottom of the deck face down. Shuffle the remaining mission cards and influence cards separately, and place each deck next to the board. Place one of each player's tracker tokens on the zero of the scoring and major council track on the main board, on the intrigue track of their player board, and on space one of the scroll track on their player board. Randomly choose a first player and give them the first player marker. Each subsequent player gets two additional coins for each player before them. Starting with the first player and going clockwise, each player will place one gondola on any dock and put one of their assistants on the first space of that building, except for communal buildings, and take that action. Then, starting with the last player and going counterclockwise, players will repeat the process. Players can dock their gondola on a space with another player. Doing so will advance the opposing player's assistant one space on the building and give them a victory point. At the start of each player's first turn, they will choose which gondola to place their gondolier in. Each player's turn is comprised of a series of steps, done in order, then passes to the next player in clockwise order. At the start of a turn, players may play one influence card from their hand. Influence cards are special abilities that will allow players to gain coins and resources, build bridges, affect the intrigue level of themselves and other players, and or change the game state for the turn. Once the action is completed on the card, discard it next to the influence deck. Next, players will decide to either move their gondolier or keep it on the same boat to mark which gondola is active for the turn. Moving the gondolier to an open boat of the player's color is free, there's no cost. To keep the gondolier on the same boat will cost three coins paid to the supply. The current player will now move their gondola up and down the canals of Venice, activating assistance and spreading gossip as they progress forward. To move, players will pay the cost on the canal through which they are moving and place the coins on the board. If it is the first movement for the player, instead of paying the cost, put the first movement marker on the board instead. This will show the path a player takes during their turn. While players can move as far as they can afford, they can only ever use a canal and dock once, including their own starting dock. When a player moves through a canal with a bridge on it, then the movement cost is zero. If the active player controls the bridge, they gain a coin. If the bridge is controlled by another player, then the active player gains one intrigue. Note, only one bridge can ever be on a single canal. Arriving at a new dock, the player will declare if they are passing through or stopping. If they are passing through and there is no assistant on the building or it is not a communal building, they will pay the cost of the canal and move to the next dock. If the building does have an assistant or it is a communal building, the building will activate before the player will progress forward. When activating a building, players will have the option to take the action on the building except in the case of communal building, where players have to take the action. Taking an action on the building tile, players may perform the action that their assistant is on and those before it. Actions have to be done in full. If an action cannot be done, 
then the player may choose to skip the action. Once all actions are performed and or passed, the player may continue to move down the canal. If a player is passing through a dock where another gondola is docked, before moving forward, a meeting will occur. If it is the active player's boat, then that player can freely move resources between boats. Note, the maximum number of resources a boat can carry is five. If the gondola is controlled by another player, then each player must lose one scroll or gain one intrigue. Declaring to stop, a player will dock their boat at the building and move on to the next step. Players can share dock spaces with other players, but not their own. Stack the boat atop any other boat on the location and award victory points to each player equal to the number of boats dock, excluding the active player. Note, stopping on a location with other players does not cause a meeting to take place. At this time, the active player can complete one mission from their hand, reveal the mission card bearing the name of the building where docked, pay the indicated cost for the active boat, and gain the coins and victory points immediately. Place the mission card under one of the three slots on the player board. The mission card's ongoing effect is now active. During this time, players can replace other mission cards to swap out the ongoing effects. Finally, the active player will advance one last time. To advance, if the player does not have an assistant on the building, they will take one from their supply and put it on the first top space of the building and then activate the building as described before. If the player does have an assistant on the building, they move it one space clockwise and activate the building. If there is another player's assistant on the same space, advance it one space clockwise as well. There can only ever be one assistant on spaces one through three on a building. The only time a space can have more than one assistant on it is the fourth and final space of the building. If the assistant is already on the fourth space, skip this step and go straight to activating the building. After the turn is over, clear all the coins from the board and pass the first movement marker to the next player. The end of game triggers when the last mission card is drawn or when a player tracker token on the major council reaches the space on the end game marker. When either happens, move the end game marker on the council track to the end game triggered spot. Finish the current round and play two more additional rounds. Once the last round is complete, end game scoring begins. First, players will earn the reward on how they placed on the major council track. If there is a tie for a reward, players will split the average of their reward, rounded down. Players will then score for the number of assistants on the board. 1 to 6, 0 points. 7 to 8, half their major council spot, rounded up. 9 or more, scores equal to their major council spot. Next, players can reduce their intrigue. To do so, they can spend two scrolls or four coins to reduce their intrigue by one. After reducing intrigue, the player with the highest intrigue, greater than zero, is arrested and eliminated from winning. Last, convert any remaining coins into victory points. Four coins equals one victory point. The player with the most victory points at the end of scoring is declared the winner. Congratulations, you are the best merchant in Venice.